This tutorial describes the import and conversion of core section data to an XML data format so it can be plotted in Coralizer. To start, you'll need a tabular data file with values separated by commas, tabs, spaces, or semicolons. A comma-separated values file, or CSV, is the most commonly used tabular data format and will be used in this demo. If your data is in the Excel format, you can save it as CSV, CSV by going to the File menu, choosing Save As, and then choosing the comma separated values format and save. Your data file must include at least one column of numeric data. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. It must include at least one column with depths. We actually have two different columns with depths. Uh, and it must include one or more columns identifying the core section from which each data point was collected. So I have that column here. So if your data is ready, then go to Coralizer and go to the File menu, go to Load Data, and choose Convert Tabular Data to XML to get started. Now navigate to the file that you'd like to import. We'll choose this one. This opens the Convert Tabular Data dialog. The contents of the selected file appear in an Excel-like table at the bottom of the dialog with row and column numbers. You can adjust the size of columns if you want. You can see this is the contents of my file here. The dialog will try to determine the correct delimiter, comma, tab, space, or semicolon for the file, but it doesn't always work perfectly. If you see all your data packed into the first column, that usually means the dialog got it wrong. So I'll, just as an example, I'll say, I'll change my field delimiter here from comma, which is correct, to tab. And as you can see, now I have a single column with all of my values so that's a good sign that the dialog got it wrong. Uh, you can fix this by just choosing the correct delimiter here. So I'm gonna go back to comma and it will happily process it back uh, into the correct format. So make sure that looks correct before you proceed. Once the columns of the table look correct, you'll enter row and column numbers in the data import parameters area to import your data completely and correctly. So let's start with the first field here. Data start row and data end row indicate the, the range of your data. In this file, the first actual row of data starts at row seven here. So I'm gonna put seven. The dialog assumes that the last row of your file is also the last row of data. So we've got 5166 here. I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom of the page or file just to confirm that and so the last row is indeed 5166 so that is correct I can just leave that as is. Fields row is the row with names for each column so in this case that is row 4. If you have a separate row with units for each column check this box and then enter that row number so in our case we have units in row 5 so I'll leave the box checked and enter 5 here. Uh, if you don't have a separate, unit, separate units row, you can just uncheck the box and that value will be ignored. But we do have one, so I'll leave it checked. For depth column, enter the column with the depth for each data point. So as I said before, I actually have two different columns that contain depths. I have this column, which contains total depth. As you can see, it just accumulates more and more the farther we go down. Uh, and then I have a column full of section depths as well. And for this, it restarts at the beginning of each section. So this is section one. Let's go down. This is measured in centimeters. If you go down, you can see it had restarted there. So when we move from section one to this second core, uh, it restarted from zero. So that's section depth. So Identify what depth column you want to use and then choose the appropriate depth mode for that column. So I'm going to use column one with my total depths. So for that, I'm going to choose accumulated depth, not section depth. Next, you need to enter the name or the number of the column that contains your section names. It is critical that these section names exactly match the names of the corresponding section images in Coralizer. Otherwise, data won't be plotted. This issue will be discovered, discussed further in a data plotting tutorial.
If you have section names but they're divided into multiple columns, those can be flexibly combined with a special expression in the section name column. This will also be discussed in a separate tutorial. So in our case, we have complete section names in our column number two. So we're going to enter that here. And as you can see now, in the section name preview to the right, it is displaying uh, the section name in my first row of data. It's actually row seven. Uh, so that's a good check to do to make sure that your section name column is correct. For instance, if I go back to one, you can see that I have a section name of 0.005, which is clearly not a real section name. Uh, so the section name preview is useful for just confirming that you've entered uh, the correct column. It's especially helpful when you're combining elements of columns. Uh, but again, that will be explained in another demo. And then finally, uh, this field is not typically used, but uh, if you have a value, some sort of placeholder value like 9999 or bogus that indicates an invalid value, you can enter it here. But in most cases, this field can be left blank. So once your data import parameters look correct, you can click the next button, or you can just click the field selection tab. They both take you to the same place, the field selection area. Now, select the data columns to be imported by checking the boxes to the left of the column names. And check this PWAMP, PWVEL. Uh, potentially, you might have lots and lots of data columns that you want to import and don't want to click them all. You can also check a range of columns by holding the shift key and clicking. So I just selected that whole range of columns by doing that. When your data columns are selected, click the Finish button. Now choose a location to save the generated XML file. We recommend saving it alongside the original CSV file. Save this as guide oops, guide 9, export, no, it's really an import, okay, and click Save. Once you do this, the dialog will close, and that file will be immediately imported into your current session. So as you can see, I have my GLAD9 import file here, and when I select it, you can see the different data fields available in that file. And so now I will quickly demonstrate graphing that data just to confirm that I did this correctly. Uh, graphing will also be discussed in more detail in another tutorial. So if I check one of these, ah, you can see I suddenly have data alongside all of my cores in the 2A hole. I only imported data for 2A, not 2B. So that's it. That is the process. Uh, now I'm going to quickly go through the same process and import my data for hole 2B. Uh, you don't have to have your data in separate holes. You could have data for all of your holes in a single file and do this once. Uh, but for purposes of this demonstration, I put them in separate files. Uh, so again, to start, we'll go to convert tabular data to XML. I'm going to choose my 2B data file, CSV file. Uh, once again, data starts at row 7. Uh, I'm going to trust that 7780 is the last row of data. Well, okay, I won't trust it. I'll check. Indeed it is. My fields row again is 4. My units row again is 5. Uh, my depth column, this time, uh, just to demonstrate, I'm going to use my section depth column instead. So I'm going to choose depth column 3 and leave this at section depth. Uh, again, my section name column is section 2, not section 1. My section names are not decimal numbers. They are strings of characters. Uh, so that looks correct. Glad pet 6 2 b one h one And I do not have any values to ignore. So I am set. So I now move ahead to the field selection dialog, uh, choose my columns. I'm going to choose them all in one fell swoop by shift clicking. I'm going to finish. Glad, learn to type. Glad 9 to be import. When I click save, this will automatically be imported into my session. And again, you can see I have all eight fields here. Uh, and I will quickly plot those data now just to show that this worked. Uh, so I'll select them all. I'm just going to plot the PW amp. And as you can see here now in my 2B hole, I have data for all of my cores. Although some of the data does not look very exciting. Um, so there you go. So section that's how section depth works. You just have to select the correct mode. So there you have it. 
Um, again, uh, graphing will be discussed in more detail in another demo, uh, as will uh, the situation where you have your section names in separate columns. There's a way to combine those, but it's a little bit tricky. Uh, so that'll be a separate demo. So thank you for watching. Uh, have fun with Coralizer. <laughs>